Live from WSLS, this is 10 News at 6, working for you. I sent eight people to the morgue in 11 days. Now at 6, fighting COVID-19, the biggest frustration from the front lines. Plus, festival fallout, how the organizer of the Blue Ridge Rock and Country Festivals is addressing claims of missing payments and... Purdue Pharma, they've been marketing the drug as something that's not addictive when it clearly is. A new limited series filmed here at home. What Dope Sick hopes to accomplish. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Brittany McGraw. And I'm John Carlin. Tonight, we are going inside the ICU at Roanoke Memorial Hospital. We talk about COVID-19 a lot, but this is the first time that we have seen what it's like on the front lines. Yeah, the closest look that we've been able to get yet. Tent News reporter Andy Schroeder joins us live tonight. And Andy, what is the message from those Carillion employees inside the ICU? Well, John and Brittany, it's been an unimaginable year for staff here at the hospital. And while we're not allowed inside, they took time to answer our questions about life on the front lines over the last year. If the walls in the ICU at Carillion Roanoke Memorial Hospital could talk, they would tell the gruesome story of the spread of COVID-19 across the community. I sent eight people to the morgue in 11 days. Because of safety concerns, Carillion passed along our questions to some of its frontline workers, asking what it's been like for them over the last year. It is an extremely isolating illness. Sometimes people come through the doors and the ED is the last thing they remember. They will come to us and not have another memory. And they may or may not ever speak to their families again. And it's a very lonely place. Most tell the story of the recent Delta surge and how quickly it spread among the unvaccinated population in southwest Virginia. It's been distressing to see how poorly people respond to therapy once they get COVID. And often we're just doing supportive care and that's hard. Uh, when you, your medicines don't work that well, when the patients are deathly ill and no one's getting better. We've had people right before we were about to intubate them just begging and wishing and they could go ahead and get the vaccine. And unfortunately, at that point, it's too late. And so we have to continue the treatment of what it is and then hope they make it through. As vaccination rates remain relatively low in our region, providers agree that those still choosing not to get the shot are taking a potentially life threatening risk. It's very easy to think of yourself as a healthy individual and be one of the higher percent that if you get this, it's going to be like having the flu and you move on. Don't take that chance, please. But they also agree that the vaccine is providing a glimmer of hope by saving hundreds, if not thousands of lives from being lost in our region. It's really been a gift from God to get this vaccine. And uh, that was the best thing that I, I've, that's happened in the last two years. Now we'll be sharing more stories from frontline workers here at Carillion over on WSLS.com. Live in Roanoke tonight, Annie Schroeder, 10 News, working for you. Thank you, Annie. Meanwhile, to get more shots in arms, the health department is opening a brand new community vaccination center. It'll be at the former Sears at Valley View Mall. It'll have about 20 staff members each day and can host up to 500 people. New research is showing that Pfizer's effectiveness starts to drop off after a couple of months, but two doses will still prevent hospitalizations and death. The two shots alone absolutely decrease the risk of severe disease and hospitalization. What the studies added to this is that the booster dose in certain people can make sure that that protection persists over time. And that site will be open through at least December. Turning now to the forecast where we're tracking near record warmth. Chief Meteorologist Jeff Hanwich is here now to show us how long it's going to last. Jeff, kind of nice outside. It feels really good outside, but it doesn't feel like October. It feels more like September or August out there. We're going to turn cooler here as we head into the latter part of the weekend, especially as we head into the early part of the next work week. What I'll show you here is the satellite and radar composite. We are dry. We are seeing a little more cloud cover towards south side, but most of us are right now seeing a little more sunshine than cloud cover. To the west, that is where we have rain. Rain. However, the rain today, nothing like what happened yesterday and last night. We had a severe weather outbreak out across parts of Texas, Oklahoma, 
and Kansas, where many tornadoes unfortunately fell from the sky just to the west. We're talking 100 to 150 miles away towards the Rocky Mountain states. We have had reports of anywhere between 6 and 12 inches of snow. That is all in association with a front that's going to be our next weather maker here this weekend, but it's going to come through here with much less fanfare. Temperatures this evening drop into the middle 60s by 10, partly cloudy, pleasant, and as we look ahead to tomorrow, temperatures start around 60 with highs in the low to mid 80s. Overall, tomorrow warm under a mix of sun and clouds with more fog possible in the morning. Brittany. Gruesome new details tonight about the murder of an elderly Danville woman. Police found 88 year old Elizabeth Adkins dead inside her home on Jewel Street on Sunday. And I do want to warn you, some of this information is graphic. Court documents say she had a plastic bag around her head with her hands and her feet tied behind her back. Investigators believe her granddaughter and her boyfriend are responsible. It's really sad, really, really sad. And it hurts me. I don't even know the lady, but I feel for her. What torment she had to go through? Are you serious? Investigators say video also shows the pair driving up to the home. No word yet on a motive. A veteran was convicted today in connection to a police chase on Interstate 81 last year, but it's the Pulaski County community that's receiving high praise for how they handled that case. Prosecutors say Kenneth Williams will only serve about a year behind bars after his charges were downgraded. That's because they believe his actions were due to his mental health, which stemmed from his time during Operation Desert Storm. It also showed that a special court was needed for struggling veterans. Many departments like Lynchburg Police are dealing with an overwhelming amount of mental health calls, and that's why local organizations are helping them prepare. Horizon Behavioral Health has trained more than 600 officers and people in the community to handle these kinds of situations over the past decade. The demand for mental health services grows every year, but especially during the holiday season. New at 6, a festival fallout, thousands of dollars in unpaid bills. That's the claim from Pennsylvania County after the Blue Ridge Rock Festival. Last night, you heard from the organizer in a 10 News exclusive, and he says his company is owed money too. Tonight, our Tim Harfman is working for you to get answers from both sides. Heavy traffic, lack of transportation, and a shortage of camping spaces. Just some of the problems concert goers faced over four days at Rockfest. It's over now, but the county and promoter are still at odds. Pennsylvania County is in possession, as of, as of now, of a $500,000 cash bond. That's not a actual, that's actual literally wire transferred $500,000 into their account. Sly provided 10 News with this receipt from the county saying they deducted the owed meals tax from the cash bond October 7th and the remaining $349,000 could be used to pay the invoices. So not only do we have nothing that's technically due to Pennsylvania County, they're also holding as additional contingency. Sly claims this email from the county shows September 28th is the first time he received invoices for the rock and worship festivals. I never received a bill of any sort. We reached out to the county spokesperson regarding these claims, but they declined to answer. In a statement Tuesday, the county said invoices were for organizations providing additional resources, including shuttle buses and security, to help the festival. Sly says the county stepped in to help after dealing with third-party vendors who experienced labor and equipment shortages. People think that we made huge amounts of money on the festival. We didn't, because when we're going and, and, and going and finding new companies, everything was four to six times the cost. Despite the issues, Sly is taking the blame. I don't want people to feel that I'm deflecting responsibility. I take complete responsibility as CEO. You can find the full interview on WSLS.com. Coming up tonight on 10 News at 7, answers to the big questions, ticket refunds, and whether this festival will happen again next year. In the newsroom tonight, Tim Harfman, 10 News, working for you. A fire at a historic Withville landmark. Why the owner is remaining hopeful despite the damage. Plus, we're very excited to see our familiar landmarks, familiar faces. A unique opportunity, the local town playing a pivotal role in a new Hulu series. Many in the community are devastated because a Withville landmark went up in flames. You can see the, the picture right here between us. This happened yesterday. 
But thankfully, firefighters were able to save about 85% of the Log House 1776 restaurant. Investigators think last night's fire started on the first floor, then spread. But despite the heavy flames, most of the damage was in the attic. We're going to try to rebuild because it's a very good business and been for 47 years. And it, uh, we're going to try to rebuild. It certainly makes us proud knowing that we've given this business, given the owner, and given this community uh, certainly another chance of, you know, fixing and, and, and rebuilding and opening their doors again. And there is no word yet on what caused the fire. You are looking at a live picture from our Liberty University sky cam overlooking the hill city of Lynchburg, where you have a nice mix of sun and clouds. Temperatures right now in the hill city in the lower 80s. Woo, nice warm day. We'll let you know when it's going to feel more like fall, though, coming up. Happening now, it's an exciting night for television, especially if you live in the Highlands. This is a live look from the historic Masonic Theater in Clifton Forge, where people are posing for pictures ahead of the premiere of the new limited series, Dope Sick. The first three episodes dropped on Hulu today. Of course, much of that was filmed right here in Virginia. It is based on a book by Roanoke-based author Beth Macy. Dope Sick looks at how and why a widely praised prescription drug became part of the opioid epidemic. Addiction rates, overdoses, and crime are on the rise across the country because of this drug. Michael Keaton stars as a small town doctor who gives his patients Oxycontin. It was touted as a miracle drug, a non addictive painkiller, and of course, that wasn't quite the case. You may notice the Richmond State House or aerial shots of Allegheny County in some of the scenes. We're told this especially gave the town of Clifton Forge a much needed boost at the height of the pandemic. It was a huge production. It was like so many people in this town at one time, but we were able to accommodate and so many of our businesses benefited from their being here as well. A new episode of Dope Sick will be released each Wednesday for the next five weeks. Your local weather authority, always watching and tracking for you from the JES Weather Center. High pressure is in charge of our weather right now, but you'll notice to the west, that is where we have some rain and even a couple of thunderstorms. That's where we have a front. This front is our next weather maker, and it is indeed going to change our weather. Now we're quiet as we head into Thursday. Friday, I cannot rule out a stray shower late in the day into the mountains. Highlands, NRV, a stray shower cannot be ruled out on Friday late in the day. A couple more showers possible Friday night with the best chance for rain coming in as we head into the day on Saturday. I do think Saturday we're going to have some passing showers around. Best chance for rain will be between about 9 a.m. and about maybe 3 or 4 p.m. Now behind this front, a taste of fall is going to push in. Temperatures are going to drop. Another area of high pressure moves in, and that means for us we are looking quiet and cooler as we head into the day on Sunday. Really much of next week we're not going to have much rain to track is that high pressure system that moves in behind that front is going to be in charge of our weather for much of next week. After a major cool down Sunday into Monday, by the mid to latter part of the next work week, temperatures rise back above average once again. Tropical Tracker shows that we have one wave near the Caribbean that we are watching. National Hurricane Center not really impressed by it, not expected to become a named storm, and there's only one more name on the list. And her name is Wanda. If we get through Wanda, then we get to the supplemental list. It used to be the Greek alphabet, but it would be a new list of names starting with the letter A. Hopefully we don't get that far, though. Temperatures right now, 77 in Roanoke. You were at 82 in Lynchburg last hour. You've dropped to 78 here at 619, 80 in Danville, 73 in Lexington, 67, though, in Withville. A brief shot of summer for us here through Friday. Forecast highs Thursday and Friday in the 80s. The average high at this time of year only supposed to be in the lower 70s, so it's going to feel more like Tallahassee or Jacksonville, Florida. Florida out there for us here for the next couple of days with temperatures way above normal. 
The pros and cons to this warmer air. The pro is there's a lower frost chance. The con is these allergies will linger, but when that cooler air moves in by Sunday, hopefully our allergies will get a little better. Another mild night tonight with some patchy fog. Overnight lows between about 54 and 60 for tomorrow. Very warm outside for us. We're looking at a mix of sun and clouds. The mountains tomorrow 70s to near 80 outside the mountains. Low to mid 80s. Your extended forecast showing temperatures falling into the 70s Saturday, 60s Sunday back into the low to mid 70s Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. Only chance for rain here over the next seven days lies Friday night into Saturday. Happy. All right, Jeff, the Hokies are in the business of regrouping and refocusing after that near miss against the Irish and what both Virginia Tech and UVA are saying ahead of the ACC women's basketball season. Sports is next. And now the Freedom First Sports Desk with John Apicello. Physical especially on the outside. They like to press. Um, they don't like, they don't want to let teams run the ball on them. Um, they're physical up front. I think they're, they're overall a really solid team and, and they compete really well too. Just all the motions and the formations, just eyes, like eye discipline with the double moves and things like that. So I say just having our eyes in the right spot and knowing exactly where I'll help at and things like that so we can play fast. The Hokies defense ranked fourth in points allowed in the ACC, but the Pitt Panthers lead the nation in scoring, averaging 52 points per game, led by their quarterback, Kenny Pickett. So we've got irresistible force, a movable object coming for you on Saturday. Remember, Dax Hollyfield out the first half due to a targeting penalty against Notre Dame. Kickoff, Pitt, Virginia Tech at 3.30 Saturday from Lane Stadium. Day two of the ACC tip-off in Charlotte. 10 Sports Brook Leonard checks back in with the Virginia and Virginia Tech women's teams. Virginia Tech women are coming off of a historic year that ended with their first NCAA appearance since 2006. This year, they're loaded with veterans and transfers and a big missing piece from last year. Uh, you know, last year our, our bench was, uh, was very, very thin. Although we were thin, we were still good. And this year we had the same group coming back. Uh, and then we also add two very, very talented, experienced players. And so we have a great rotation right now, eight, nine players that we feel like that are going to really be able to contribute without a major drop off when we substitute in and out. The Cavaliers have a completely different story withdrawing from their season after only five games and are ready to take the court again. The motivation is being able to play games. You know, it, it feels like we've been, you know, it's only been a season, but we've so far removed. It was really difficult for our kids to watch everyone else play. It's a brand new team, and I think you guys are going to be really shocked. Um, I think the ACC is going to be really shocked and other teams, so I'm excited about that. It's sure to be an exciting year of women's basketball in Virginia. Both teams tip off in just a few weeks on November 9th. That's all I've got for you here in the Queen City at the ACC tip-off in Charlotte. I'm Brooke Leonard. Back to you. Thank you, Brooke. Raiders owner Mark Davis, when questioned about all those emails and coach, says to ask the league. They have the answers. The Saints have signed the former Hokie kicker Brian Johnson to a contract, and the Sixers are employing a former Cavaliers guard, Braxton Key. He'll head to the G League Delaware Blue Coats. All right. Thanks so much. Should be a good one. All right. It's baseball season. I love it. NBC Nightly News coming up next. We'll see you back here at 7.